And so, my dear brothers and sisters, uh, just to, to go back to another statement that I've heard that is often said about being a part of this uh, political process, being a part of this uh, governmental entity, that there, there are no good candidates. So I'm not going to vote for anybody. And in Islam, we have this concept of... Uh, how best to put it, choosing the lesser of the two evils. That not only do we have this uh, concept from Hadith and the, from the scholars, but we also see this concept in the Quran as well. If we look at uh, Surah uh, 2 and Surah Baqarah, Ayat uh, 217, they say, They ask you fighting in the sacred month is a grave sin. <laughs> but what is graver? is, and I'm paraphrasing, but what is a graver sin is oppression, is, is being uh, slaughtered, is being sought. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking you to choose between these two things. That he says that, yes, fighting in the sacred month is a sin, but it is a worse sin for you to allow them to kill you, for you to allow them to oppress you, for you to allow them to slaughter you. And so you have to choose between which of these evils you will take. Brothers and sisters, please move forward. As we get closer and closer to the time, I know that there will be a lot of people coming in. And so, another way of looking at this is that the uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a part of our, our aqidah. We have the belief that in the qadr of Allah, the will of Allah. And one way of looking at the qadr of Allah is the measure of the potential benefit or harm is Allah's alone. That only Allah knows the potential, the, all of the potential benefit and all of the potential harm. And we, as human beings, are, are left, uh, don't have that ability. If we look at even some of the companions of the Prophet, we couldn't judge them, uh, we couldn't know the potential benefit or the potential harm of even some of the companions of the Prophet. When we look at Khalid bin Walid, uh, he was the sword of Allah. But before he was the sword of Allah, he was commanding the armies that were going against Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Who would have thought that? We couldn't see into his heart. We couldn't see that he was going to become the sword of Allah at that point in time. We couldn't see the, 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 the potential benefit in Omar, radiallahu anhu, who was going to kill the Prophet and then turn around and began one of the, the staunchest supporters of uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so we don't have that ability, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, it's jihad, has given us a conscience, has given us this, this intellect, and he has asked us, prescribed for us, to use that intellect in the best way possible. He has asked us to strive as in the race towards all that is good. And the way that particular ayat is says is, to each is a goal, to which Allah turns them. So strive together toward all that is good. Strive for what is most useful circumstance. Strive together. Strive, struggle. But you're striving to choose that which is best. So you have to choose between two things. And so that, my brothers and sisters, is still a uh, command that's on us. Sometimes we have to choose between the lesser of evils. So we might not be able to see the ultimate harm or the ultimate benefit, but our intellect and our, 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 our acumen does allow us to make some determinations, does allow us to do research and make some investigation into the situation so that we should be able to determine who we feel upon our knowledge, upon what we've understood, who would cause the most harm and who would cause the most good? And so finding that, determining that, is an incumbent upon us. Just like education is incumbent upon us in this beautiful religion of ours. That the Adhan, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, calls you to Jummah. Calls you to the education that happens in Jummah. Calls you to the reminder that happens in Jummah. That our salat, our adhan, everything calls you to understand this religion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says over and over again the, uh, to reflect 
on what has gone on before, to reflect on what has happened in the past, to reflect on history, to reflect, to think, to use our minds and our intellects. And so we have to use our intellects to determine what path we should take. Just because it is politics and we feel like it's messy doesn't give us the right to say, I don't want to be bothered. Doesn't give us the right to say, I don't want to do the research because that's not my favorite subject. Because it's not my basketball scores or my football scores or, or something I really care about. No, my dear brothers and sisters, we are asked, we are given this awesome responsibility, but this awesome right that others have fought and died for, have died never seen, have, have hoped for and prayed for, and now that they have it, now that we have it, my brothers and sisters, we are, in, are obligated to use it to the best advantage, to use it for the betterment of society, to use it for the betterment of the future. Because if we don't, then we're failing. We're failing not only ourselves, but we're failing those who will come behind us. And so, as I conclude, and just looking back on the history, because if you just choose to say, well, they're both bad, they're all bad, so I'm not going to vote, well, that's similar to you giving somebody else's vote more power. And history has shown that even African Americans, when uh, we were slaves, they were still so valued as, as commodities that the southern states wanted to make sure that they still had the, the, the power of their voice to vote, the power of their voice to uh, create legislation. So they said that even though we're not going to give them the right to vote, we want you to recognize them as full human beings so that I can have more senators, so I can have more influence with the government, so I can have more power. And the compromise they came up with was to make us three-fifths of a human being. So for every one slave, so it would take, uh, uh, my math is, is going out now, but we were three-fifths of a human being. So not, you couldn't count, a slave didn't count for one, he counted for three-fifths. And so that's what we are doing in essence when we choose not to vote. We are choosing to inflate the power of somebody else's voice. And that might not be a voice you want to inflate. That might not be a power that you want to see take, uh, take hold or take root. That might not be a voice that reflects your interest. That might not be a voice that is going to do you fairly. So my dear brothers and sisters, it is incumbent upon us to do the research, to vote our conscience, to, to learn what is out there. It is so easy for us to find information on uh, this political process. It's easy. Yeah, just the same way that you can Google where you want to go eat, you can Google some uh, candidate's website and find out what their platform is. The same way you can get informed so that you can have no, uh, you have no reservations about going ahead and, and honoring the trust that has been entrusted to you, this right to vote, because not everyone has it. It is not just a right, but an obligation upon us. And so to reiterate, my dear brothers and sisters, It is a false and unsupportable claim that participation in a democratic system could cause a Muslim to lose their religion. Furthermore, al-Islam by this, I mean the religion and practice, not just by birth, but in statistic, uh, as in statistically Muslim culture, is growing faster in America than it is growing anywhere else in the hemisphere because of the democracy that we live in, because we have the First Amendment right of religion. Nowhere else could this happen. If our founding fathers chose to, they could have made this uh, a Catholic country or a Protestant country, but no. They chose to honor the fact that anyone of any religion can do, uh, has a right to be here and has a right to participate. There is no religious requirement even for the highest office in the land of president. You can be a Sikh and be president. You can be a Muslim and be president. You can be a Catholic or a Jew and be president. But we have to be a part of the process if we want to see things happen 
that positively affect us in this society. Because we have seen, and history has shown, what happens when the laws are against you. History shows and continues to show what happens when the laws are against you. If you look at several of the movements that are going on right now, you can see the 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 uh, the uh, criminalization and the uh, uh, the penal system reform. That that is some place where someone decided that we were going to have the three strikes rule, that we were going to have these mandatory minimums, and, and it was going to disenfranchise a huge section of our population. And now they are seeing it as a, a burden on the, uh, on the government. Now they are seeing it as a burden on society, and so they are seeking to reform it. But we have to be a part of that process if we want that process to, to turn out favorably for us. We've seen how many different cities and how many different places where they want to, uh, to rate laws to, to strike down Sharia law and to, to stop immigration from Muslim countries and to do all of these things that don't have our best interests. But we can't just sit around and lament. That, that, that idea of sabr, of patience, doesn't mean that we just sit back and allow these things to happen. No. It means that we have to be active. The Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he will not change the condition until first they change what is in their hearts. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this over and over and over again into the Quran that if you work fi sabilillah, if you act on that belief, on that, on, on your, on your faith in Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, then He will come to you and grant you victory. Then He will come to you with your help. But first, you have to have that faith. First, you have to act. And so, as I conclude, any American Muslim who that has interest to be protected in this country should become a full participant in moving America towards the ideals of Al Islam by utilizing all legitimate means and methods to do so. And one of them is to vote. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants us the mercy of time. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants us and increases us in our iman, increases us in our taqwa, increasing us in our, our amana, our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he makes it easy for us to work righteous deeds, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it easy for us to come together in the mutual teaching of truth, of haq, in the mutual teaching of patience and constancy. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatan wa fi akhirati hasanatan wa kina ata wa noor wa kimu salam. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu anna Muhammad al-Rasulullah, Hayyan al-Salat, Hayyan al-Falah, Fadghamat al-Salat, Fadghamat al-Salat, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, لا إله إلا الله Feet to feet, shoulder to shoulder Line your hearts Please make sure if you don't need a chair that you leave the chair uh, for those of our elder brothers and sisters in new chairs Allahu Akbar Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahmanirrahim Maliki Yawmatin إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إثنى الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين نمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين والأصل إن الإنسان لفي قصر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتوسوا بالطق وتوسوا بالصبر الله سمي الله لما حمده الله